Yellowstone volcano over due claim sparks USGS admission for the next super eruption date. This is by Callum Horn Express UK. The video before this one shows the 250 plus somewhat earthquakes registered in Yellowstone in about 28 days. And that leads to people having eruption fears because they have to be able to explain why this is going on. Now, we did have July 4th, July 5th, the Rich Crest South California earthquakes, the big one being 7.1 magnitude. That happened 20 years ago. Rich Crest had a 7.1 magnitude, and that earthquake caused a quake swarm in Yellowstone a few weeks later. Also, the Alaska Denali earthquake caused Yellowstone quake swarm a few weeks later, as did the Chile 8.8 magnitude earthquake and the Haiti earthquakes. They also gave Yellowstone quake swarms a couple of weeks later. Now, we've uh, also stated that recently geologists have informed us that they have found a magma plume under the Southern California area from Mexico US border and that magma makes its way towards the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano and turns towards Yellowstone. So that could be a reason why the Ridgecrest earthquakes, for example of last the last 7.1 which was 20 years ago, that earthquake, which was very strong, caused the Yellowstone quake swarms a few weeks later. Now, we did point that out when we had the Ridgecrest quakes July 4th and 5th. That's when we found that 20 years ago there was a similar earthquake of 7.1 causing quake swarms in Yellowstone, and we've been saying directly, continuously since then, that we should expect, or we, we could expect, a quake swarm to be hitting Yellowstone after the Ridgecrest quakes. Now, I don't know if 20 years ago they had the tremendous amount of quake activity that we're seeing now, over 60,000 quakes since July, July 4th and 5th. I mean, that's, uh, and they're still going on. And uh, by the hour, by the f every few minutes, that is. And um, what's going on there, we have no idea. But that whole area of Southern California is volcano, the coastal volcanic field. North of that is, of course, the Inyo craters, the Mono craters, the Mono fields, and also the Mammoth Lakes area, which is the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. Now concerning the overdue claim sparks, uh, sparking the USGS admission for a next super eruption, Yellowstone volcano scientist Jacob Lowenstern revealed how overdue an eruption at the supervolcano is, and he revealed this during the USGS video made 2014. Self-proclaimed experts reach conclusions calculating differences in timing between events. We know that the supervolcano eruptions, the super eruptions at this uh, area of the caldera happened three times recently, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago, leaving some to claim that an over eruption is due. Uh, a super eruption is overdue. Now, the Yellowstone Caldera is, as we know, one of the world's most dangerous supervolcanoes. And if it does have a super eruption, it can inflict devastation worldwide. The location is on uh, the northwest area of Wyoming, and it also stretches into Montana and Idaho. Dr. Jacob Lowenstern claims that these calculations are really rubbish claims. He told viewers 
on USGS YouTube channel in 2014, when you see people claiming it's overdue, usually the numbers they come up with say at least the last eruption was 640,000 years ago, but that uh, it erupts every 600,000 years, therefore it's 40,000 years overdue. And he goes into the calculations basically saying that it's not overdue. He said if you average those numbers, you come up with something like that's over 700,000 years. So in reality, if you try to make this argument, it would not be overdue for another 70,000 years. He's talking about a super eruption. He went on to state that even this calculation is questionably useful. He said the other thing that's important to realize is when you when they do statistics based on two eruptive intervals, they're just playing games because there's just not enough. There's no clock down there. The magma is going to erupt when it wants to erupt, he says. There's been a lot of things that have happened over the last 600,000 years that might indicate there's less likely of an eruption. USGS provides a more detailed explanation as to why the volcano is not overdue. Their website reads, first of all, one cannot present recurrent intervals based on only two values. It would be statistically meaningless. But for those who insist, he said, let's do the math. And he comes out by saying that we're still about 90,000 years away from a time when we might consider calling Yellowstone overdue for another caldera forming super eruption. And he goes on to say, nevertheless, we cannot discount the possibility of another such eruption occurring sometime in the future, given Yellowstone's volcanic history and the continued presence of magma beneath the Yellowstone caldera. Also, more recently, researchers theorized what would happen if an asteroid was to strike Yellowstone National Park. Well, you know, we've had two asteroid strikes nearby, of course, millions of years ago. Uh, one towards its uh, west, which was like 600 million years ago and the other one just south of that, which was like uh, 200 million years ago. But um, we've had, we have asteroid strikes basically everywhere in the United States, and a lot of places in the world, 50 alone just in, uh, in Australia. But um, recently one has been found on the northwest uh, coast of Scotland. And um, God forbid if that happens. Now, the... Uh, channel Life's Biggest Questions asked viewers, it would need to be an asteroid the likes of which Earth has not seen in millions of years to make a damage to Yellowstone. If it did hit Yellowstone, then it would likely affect the volcano, likely causing a lava eruption, and it would be a nightmare. Now, um, we still have to keep our eyes on Yellowstone because, as we said, we they, the geologists recently came out and... Uh, informed us that there is a magma plume underneath Ridgecrest going up north along, uh, northwest along the uh, California faults of San Andreas and the Walker Lane fault systems. And that's exactly where we do find volcanoes on the fault systems. And that is um, a magma plume under there which then turns towards Yellowstone. Now I don't know if Jacob Lowenstern knew of this magma location back in 2014, but this is definitely something that is proof and evidence stated by the geologists recently. Uh, we have been told that Ridgecrest is not at all connected to Yellowstone after the July 4th and 5th quakes, but that is not so. They are connected because they have the same magma body, the same magma plume. So they are connected, as we saw with the Ridgecrest 7.1 magnitude earthquake of 1999. Now this is uh, the diagram having to do with the magma plume that has been found to be connecting Ridgecrest, Long Valley, as you can see going all the way up, totally the whole of California, has that magma plume underneath, and then it stretches depending on which uh, depth you're at, it goes under Yellowstone. And this explains why the Ridgecrest quake of 1999 hit towards Yellowstone with the quake swarm a couple of weeks later.
And you can see even the uh, second map on the, from the bottom on the left-hand side has a black dotted circle right over the area of Ridgecrest, uh, uh, Salt and Buttes, uh, Lo the Los Angeles area, Southern San Andreas area. That's exactly where this uh, quake swarm hit and is still hitting. That started July 4th and 5th. This map, I believe, is from 2004. And uh, this is another cut line. You can see it's passing directly from Salton Butte's Ridgecrest area towards Yellowstone. So this definitely shows from 2004 that is totally connected. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.